we are going to look at limits numerically. So let's look at a function f of x equals x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2 and look at a table of values that we would get as we substitute various x values in this function. So first we're going to approach 2 from the left using 1.9 1.99 and so forth getting closer and closer to 2 and we see that these function values appear to be approaching the value of 12. Now we're going to approach x equals 2 from the right so we start at things greater 2.1 and then get closer and closer and closer to 2 and we see that the function values again appear to be approaching 12 so we would say the limit as x approaches 2 of this function is 12 by looking at these values. Now let's look a little more at this function to see why we would have gotten that. Looking at the numerator we see it's the difference of cubes and it will factor into x minus 2 and x squared plus 2x plus 4. This is over x minus 2. We could reduce and we see we have a quadratic factor x squared plus 2x plus 4 and we know the graph of that would be a parabola. In fact if we went to some kind of graphing software and asked to graph this function we would get a parabola. Now this graph is not accurate for this function because we know from our function that the 2 is excluded from the domain because that would cause our undefined dividing by 0. So our original function's domain x cannot equal 2. That doesn't show up here on our graph but here is our graph of x squared plus 2x plus 4 which is an equivalent function with the difference of these functions have different domains. Let's get a little closer on the graph to x equals 2 and we can see that we are approaching a function value of 12. As we approach from the left or the right, we're approaching this value of 12, but to make this accurate, there should be a hole at 2. So the function does not exist at x equals 2, but the limit as x approaches 2 equals 12. Let's look at another example. Here we have g of x and we're not given the function defined explicitly. We've got a table of values. We can see as we approach 2 from the left hand side that our function appears to be approaching 12. But as we take these values from the right hand side, values greater than 2, but approach 2 and we see what our function is doing, our function appears to be approaching 4 and one-third. So if we were looking here at approaching a value of x equals 2, from the left hand side these values appear to be approaching function value of 12, but from the right hand side these values are approaching a function value of about 4 and one-third. Therefore, if we have the limit as x approaches 2 of this function, we say it does not exist, and that's our abbreviation for does not exist, because the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit. So look at another example. Here we're going to see if we can see from a table of values about the limit as x approaches negative 5 of g of x. And in looking at this, as we approach negative 5 from the left-hand side, we see that the function values are approaching 23. But as we approach with values that are greater than negative 5, but getting close to negative 5, look what the function is doing. It's getting larger and larger and larger. So this limit, again, does not exist. And if we were trying to see what's going on graphically, we see here that we have values from the left hand side that are approaching a function value of 23, but as we approach from the right hand side they're getting larger and larger and larger. And therefore the limit of this function when x approaches negative 5 does not exist. Let's look at something kind of interesting with this function. We have the limit as x approaches 0 plus, which means from the right hand side, cosine of 1 over x. Now let's think of just cosine theta for a minute because theta could equal 1 over x and we know cosine theta, these values, function values are always going to be between negative 1 and 1. But what happens as we approach 0 here and we can see we couldn't directly evaluate this by putting in a 0 because we would have something that's undefined. So as we approach from above, let's look at a table of values and 
have these values closer and closer to zero. Now this is an example to show you if you didn't look at enough of these numerically you may be deceived because what if you just decided oh this is close enough to zero here and it appears that this is approaching negative one and you might incorrectly conclude that this limit is negative one but you can see what happens as we keep going this value is close to one this one's close to negative one this one's about negative one-third so what happens is this is actually all over the place between negative one and one and as you get closer and closer and closer to zero, this oscillates over shorter and shorter intervals, fa oscillates faster and faster and faster, but it never does get closer and closer and closer to one specific value. It continues to oscillate between negative one and one. So therefore we say again, the limit does not exist. One last example, let's look at the limit as x approaches zero of one over x squared. Again, this function is not defined when x equals zero, but let's look on either side as we approach zero. And we can see since we are squaring x that we're going to get out positive values from either side. So it doesn't matter if we put in 0.1 or negative 0.1, we're going to get out the same values. So we'll just put it as plus or minus. So we're going to let our x values get closer and closer to zero from both the positive and negative side. And as those values approach zero, we look to see what the function is doing and so we can see why this would be the case that these are um, becoming larger and larger and larger because if we took this function and we put in 0.1 that's 1 tenth and we squared that we can see by the time we square it and simplify that we would get 100 and so as we get smaller and smaller and smaller this function is going to become larger and larger. And so it's going to approach infinity. If we looked at this graphically as we approach zero from the left or from the right, we can see that this function value is getting larger and larger and larger towards infinity. Now from the left hand side and the right hand side, we are approaching infinity. If one was positive infinity, one was negative infinity, that'd be a different story. We're going to talk a little bit more about infinite limits in a later section. But though the limit doesn't exist, we say it equals infinity to signify the fact that from both sides it is heading towards infinity.